So the DJI Spark is one of the coolest drones on the market because it's so small and portable. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing five quick tips for how you can get the most out of it coming up. Hey, what's up? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of tips and strategy videos as well as gear review tip videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, check out show notes and links in the description below. I'll list out my settings, the specs of the drone, and anything else we use for this video. Let's jump into the tips. So recently, DJI sent us out a Spark to test out, and so far we have been loving it. Not only because it's a super fun and portable drone to use, of course, it's the tiniest drone that DJI makes, but also because it's a very budget drone. A lot of people like this as a first drone, as a gift idea, and as something that's more affordable than other drones on the market, and you still get performance. But even beyond that, we've discovered that it's also good for YouTubers, for vloggers, for anybody that wants a drone that you can just throw in your bag, take with you, and get cool footage. But let's jump into some of the tips for getting the most out of the Spark. Now, when it comes to getting started with the Spark, I just Googled the DJI video that showed me how to set it up step-by-step, step, and I just follow the steps in that video, and I'll actually link to that in the description below. Now, a couple tips for any drone when you first get started. Make sure you update the firmware of the drone, the firmware of the remote if you have one, and the app is making sure the app is the most recent version. And so block some time to get everything set up and synchronized. Not super hard to do, just follow the steps in that video. And then the last thing is, of course, make sure that you've got an SD card plugged in and then you're ready to go fly. And so for tip number one for shooting with drones is pick cool locations. You know, when we were testing this, Omar was able to test it out in LA, even get some footage down by the water. And then here in Vegas, we were able to shoot a couple spots, but I like to scout spots ahead of time, whether that's using Google Docs or just always paying attention when we drive around town to find cool spots. And not just a cool location, but also think about a cool time of day. Usually golden hour when the sun is rising or setting really creates cool light dynamics. You can get some shadows, some contrast. And so don't forget, half of getting really cool footage is picking really cool locations that look awesome. Tip number two is the quick shot modes. Now, one thing that's awesome about the Spark is a few different quick shot modes that are really easy to set up and use, and they get you some cinematic shots that are easy to create because they're just built right into um, the drone. And so if you're just using a phone, you can get to the quick shot modes and do things like droney, which we tested out. This is actually a shot that starts with the drone close and backs up and elevates. So it's basically like a selfie, but they call it a droney, right? Imagine you had your family or like a group of people that were on the edge of a balcony or something and you wanted to get that pound out shot, all you got to do is select droney, select your subject, it counts down, starts recording for you, and then it just pulls out nice. And you can even set the different distance of that droney shot. There's also a couple other quick shot modes. We tested the helix. This one is super cool. There's also circle, but helix is circling around you while elevating. So again, these are some dramatic kind of dynamic cinematic shots that are based right in those quick shot modes. Just select it, track your subject really quick right on the um, your smartphone, and then hit go, and it does all the work for you. And then there's also a rocket one. So I just laid down on the grass here, and this one's kind of cool. It just goes straight up, but it tracks with the camera down, kind of a bird's eye view, showing off the shot. And these quick shot modes are nice because they're user friendly. So if you're new to drones, you can get some dynamic shots. But even for us who've been flying for a while, they're also cool because they're just solid. It gets perfect flawless movement, you just set it right on the phone, you're good to go. Tip number three are the gesture controls. Now, one of the cool things about the Spark is the ability to actually use hand movements and palm control to do some interesting things. You know, first of all, you can just tap the power button twice when the uh, Spark is in your hand and it just takes off right there. Then you can start doing palm control and I was surprised because I've seen different videos about this online, but our first time testing this out, it was very responsive. We could get it to go up, down, side to side, and that's nice. You could get the drone right where you want it and then of course do the selfie mode. You just throw 
throw up the box with your fingers. It kind of has a delay. You watch the lights flash and then it'll snap that selfie for you. So great for just family stuff or group stuff. If you're hanging out with friends or your crew, you even want to get a behind the scenes shot on like a video shoot, a lot of different things you could do there. And then also has palm land. So when you're done, you just put your palm under there. The sensors see that and the spark will land in your hand. So all in all, it's pretty cool because you've got quick shot modes. You also have those gesture controls, but you also have other intelligent flight modes like active track, similar things that you may have seen in even other DJI drones are all in there. A lot of different choices for getting creative video shots. Tip number four is simple and clean camera movements. I've learned that one of the secrets of getting awesome footage out of drones is actually to keep things simple and to avoid jerky movements or anything that's too complex, especially if you're new to drones. For example, one of the things I like to do is get close to a building or an object and then just lift up straight. What ends up happening is you see the movement of being close to that building and then you see the reveal shot as it crests over the top and maybe reveals tons of landscape or a sunrise or a sunset or something like that. So that's kind of just a simple vertical shot. The other uh, option is going just horizontal. This is great if you go around like a, a train track or around a coastline or even just along kind of a road and something that is revealing um, that shot progressively and you're just flying it in a straight line. Again, keep it clean, keep it simple and you can get some really cool looking shots. Another example is flying at low altitudes. Now, of course, always be safe and be careful with these types of shots, but you know, when you're really high in the sky, it's not that dramatic, but when you're close to the ground, it simulates a lot of movement. You really feel the movement of the shot as it's traveling along the ground. And then finally, consider flying close to different obstacles and objects. Now, of course, always be careful with this shot as well, but you know, when you fly close to things, it creates a very cool effect. So for instance, we're just shooting right here in this park park area and as we're flying down this path you can see the motion of trees patch passing by really creates cool drama and a great visual for the drone and what's cool about the spark is it's really easy to navigate and fly in these areas because it's so small and even just the propeller guards gives me a lot of peace of mind plus the sensors I've actually crashed a fair amount of drones in my time and so so far navigating with the spark has been awesome and those are a few tips of keeping things clean keeping things simple so that you can get awesome looking footage to use in your videos, your vlogs, and all of your creative projects. And tip number five is use the remote. Now what's cool about the Spark is you can use it with just a smartphone to get it set up and you can use it with gesture controls and things like that. So you technically don't need the remote and I believe that the Spark right now at the time of shooting this video is uh, around $500 USD, but you can check current specials and whatnot. We'll link to those in the description below. But what's cool about the remote is it gives you a lot more control, a lot more versatility, and we've actually been testing out the fly more combo, right? And so with that, you don't only get the remote but you get the propeller guards and also an extra battery and with the battery life being about 16 minutes having an extra battery is super nice because we find that you know we're not shooting for very long when all of a sudden we need to switch the battery out so definitely recommend the fly more combo but the remote is huge because it allows you to have more scalability right if you want to just take it Omar mentioned going without the remote just to get quick shots to include in videos but if you want to have more control there's even a sports mode on there so what's nice about the remote is I think it allows you to like elevate your game. If you're just starting, you could start simple, which is the phone and gesture controls. But as you evolve and maybe you want to get more dynamic, more dramatic, more cinematic shots, a little more custom and having, you know, a really dependable connection through the um, RC connection between the remote and the Spark, a great investment and something that I don't think anybody would regret when using the Spark. And then finally, one quick bonus tip is consider investing in DJI Care or their DJI Care Refresh program. And the reason I've been researching this lately is I actually crashed my Mavic and I didn't have Care. So I started to see, what if I did actually have it? And what's cool about it is if you're new to drones or even if you're experienced with drones, you realize that sometime or another, you're probably going to crash it, right? It's just something that happens to, I think, all of us. And especially if you're using it and pushing the boundaries 
boundaries of getting close to objects or anything like that. But what's cool about Care Refresh that I know now is that when you just pay for that fee originally, now no questions asked. You know, whether it's water damage, whether it's you crash it, no matter what happens to your drone, uh, so long as you can actually send the body back into DJI, you just pay like a minimal fee and they send you a brand new drone. And so I think DJI Care was the old program and DJI Care Refresh is the new program. So I'll link to details about that in the description below. But from here on out, any drone that we get here at Think Media, we're gonna make sure to put in DJI Care just because we push them hard enough, we use them hard enough. Just the peace of mind to have that is a uh, really good program, especially when you're investing even in a drone like this or definitely the more expensive models with DJI. All right, so I hope that those spark and drone tips were helpful. Question of the day, what are your tips for flying drones, getting dynamic shots, and if you use the spark, what do you think about it? Post in the comment section below, and remember, some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comment section. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And to see other videos in our drone tip series, just click or tap the screen right there. For another video from Think Media, just click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.